Hello, folks. Welcome to Cudlow. I'm Larry Cudlow. All right. Rock and roll. President Biden's climate czar, John Kerry, testified today before the House Foreign Affairs Committee. He said this is a historical moment to grab the opportunity to transition to clean energy. And even bigger than the Industrial Revolution, he said. No grandiosity there. Take a listen and weep. This opportunity to transition to clean energy is without doubt the largest economic opportunity the world has seen since the Industrial Revolution. Well, there you have it. Listen and weep. Anyway, among other things, Mr. Kerry wants the U.S. to spend $100 billion for less developed countries so they can make this grandiose transition to clean energy. He wants to end gas-powered cars. He wants to go 100% electric by 2035. He believes the so-called climate crisis is a threat to our national security. And he's fallen in love with the misnamed Inflation Reduction Act, which he says has already created 100,000 jobs. And he says every step he's taken is based on the best available science. Phew. Breathtaking. I'm gasping for air on this, for clean air, of course. Now, with all this said, by our climate czar, let me add a couple of notes to his songbook. First of all, he's a cabinet member who has never been confirmed by the Senate. He's got a 45-member staff. He jets all around the globe. He may well be making climate deals or climate treaties that no one knows about because it's basically a rogue operation, and he is not held accountable to anybody. There is no formal congressional oversight. And today, in front of the foreign affairs, he wouldn't talk about his operations at all. Now, according to the Unleashed Prosperity Hotline, House Oversight Chairman James Comer is going to haul Kerry before his committee to explain how he can unilaterally sign the U.S. up for these pricey climate agreements. None of this is constitutional. There's been no congressional appropriation. And basically, nobody knows what this guy's doing. Additionally, on the point of science, I want to again refer back, this is so interesting, to Joe Biden's Council of Economic Advisors and his Office of Management and Budget. Together, those two agencies put together an honest white paper, which basically says, modestly warmer temperatures, like 2 to 4 degrees Fahrenheit, has had no impact on the American economy, all right? Over the last 125 years, a 2% temperature jump led to estimates of about a one-half of 1% uh, reduction in the level of GDP. Now, I'm not talking annually every year. That's the loss in the level of output over the past 125 years. It is minuscule. You can't really count it. It's just a bunch of white noise. Now, think we can live with that? Well, we've done pretty well over the last century and a quarter, don't you think? And going forward, using UN estimates of a roughly, let's say, two degree plus or even maybe a four degree plus warmer temperature will again have virtually no economic impact. This is over the next 80 to 100 years, minuscule. Now, we've talked about this before on this show, but this is a CEA OMB white paper. It's an honest effort to catalog the science. There's no industrial revolution for climate purposes. There's no existential threat. There's no banking collapse. There's no need to shut down fossil fuels. What you have is a small warming trend. I'm not going to deny that. But it is not an apocalyptic vision. And it is not an apocalyptic version of Mr. Biden or Mr. Kerry or Ms. Yellen or the hordes of greenies inhabiting the Biden administration. And by the way, talking about science, American technological inventions and innovations and advances are likely to produce not only declining carbon, as we have seen, but also fabulous prosperity opportunities for this great country of ours. Fabulous. That is, as long as we can stop the Biden command and control central planning policies to turn everything green overnight. And maybe somebody like Chairman Comer or whoever will lasso John Kerry 
tighten the rope and tie him up to a good, sturdy fence post, maybe for the next 100 years. Now, folks, we're going to talk later in the show to Manhattan Institute economist Mark Mills about the unpopularity and the impossibility of a 100% electric vehicles. But that's for my riff right here at the top.